The book is called Men on Strike. The author, Dr. Helen Smith, and she joins us now via Skype from Knoxville, Tennessee. Dr. Smith, welcome to the show. Hi, Ezra. Thanks so much for having me on. Oh, it's great to have you on the show. Now, what do you mean by men on strike? This isn't a labor law book. This is about men and their place in our culture, isn't it? Exactly. No, it's not about it. It's sort of a labor strike, but actually what it is is there have been many books that have been written about men, uh, The End of Man or, you know, Manning Up, or men, things that look at men very in a very sort of derogatory way. And my book looks at men who are sort of opting out of society and saying, you know, I don't want to get married, I don't want to go to college, or I, you know, maybe not even work a job or be a dad. And they're, men are often opting out now because um, the rewards are so low and the risks are so high to men today in those areas. Now, what do you mean by the rewards, the financial rewards or the moral rewards, the social rewards? Why would it not be rewarding for men to be real men? I think it's about all of that, and it's not really about being a real man. People talk about men manning up and taking responsibility, but why should somebody be responsible for such a, a crummy deal? First of all, men, we talk so much about what women need, what women need for marriage, what women need in education, but what's happened is men in marriage, for example, are the ones who are left, to, if anything goes wrong, they pay the alimony, they rarely get child support, or they rarely get custody of their children, they often pay the majority of child support, and we're not changing a lot of those laws. In addition to that, there are things where if a man is uh, paternity fraud, we don't care if a man is married and he ends up um, finding out that a child is not his three years hence, he still is obligated to pay child support for that child. And there are so many rules and regulations for men today, and it's like a lot of men tell me, they say, you know, men have responsibilities and women have privileges, and it does seem in today's female-centered society that that's the case. Now, that's certainly the case in Canada here, too, especially in family law and divorce law. But even bigger than just uh, things like alimony and child support and, you know, uh, being the, the breadwinner uh, even after a marriage is done, it's, it's larger than that, isn't it? It's the masculine yeah. traits that we used to admire. You know, we, we don't look up to soldiers anymore. We, we try to smear them as, you know, war criminals right. and Abu Ghraib. Even, even I think, blue-collar work is looked down on, you know, guys who work with hard hats outdoors. I think they're sneered at now. Even the left prefers sort of the university professor activist than working men. That's my theory. What do you think? No, I think that's absolutely true. And we see that in the schools. And we see that boys, um, even young boys are told that, you know, being a boy is bad, that maybe there are perverts, pedophiles. I mean, I, there, there are kids as young as eight years old that if they kiss a, a little girl in class, something they used to do, they're told that they're, you know, a pervert. They might be kicked out of school. And the media, certainly in Canada too, but certainly here we have um, shows like The King of Queens or, you know, every Everybody loves Raymond, or the shows where there's always some bumbling, foolish guy, and the woman is, you know, pretty much together. And we, we really treat dads in our society through the commercials that we have through the media as, in a very negative way. And in fact, um, there was some research done by Jim McNamara, who is a professor in, in Sydney, Australia, and he actually found that 69% of the time in the media, in the Western media, that men are portrayed in a negative light, either as a pedophile, a pervert, or just an idiot. And I wonder what, you know, what message, like people worry about what message that sends to young boys, but it also affects men, you know, older guys. And there's got to be some part of them that says, you know what, why deal with a society constantly that berates me or thinks that my traits are so negative? Mm -hmm. um, and it's not only that, it translates into public policy. For example, in our colleges now, men can have very few due process rights. Um, here in the colleges, if a guy is found, if a girl says that he raped her or harmed her in any way, there's only needs to be a 50 percent, um, you know, there only needs 50 percent chance that that guy was guilty, and he can be found guilty and thrown out of college or not be able to hold a job. And so it's like men have less um, rights than a common criminal in our society. Hmm. Well, now, is there any way to turn this around? I, the way when you're talking about colleges, I think of all the women's studies department. It's not even just those officially called women's studies. I mean, so much of plain old English literature and history is mm -hmm. now 
herstory. It's a rev it's a revisionist approach to almost everything except for the hard sciences. What can we do about this? I mean, how can I'm, I'm not looking to tip it back to maybe right. how it was 200 years ago before yeah. women had the vote and and. And or God forbid, not. even and further back to gender apartheid. That, they think any time that you stand up for men, that you're trying to take away from women, and it's not a sum zero game. What it is is we need to be cognizant that just because, yes, of course, we want equality for men and women, but because of that, we need equality for men. And one of the things I tell um, people in the book, what are the things that they can do? Well, um, one of the things we can do is um, we need to speak up because what we we men, believe it or not, are really not allowed to speak. Uh, people always ask me, why did a woman write this book? And it's, it's probably because if a man writes this book, very few times does the media or anybody give him the microphone to talk about it. And if he does, he's labeled as a misogynist, uh, sexist, you know, and it's very difficult. So I think that one of the things is that men do need to speak up. And I think a lot of men are afraid of being labeled in that manner. But I think I talk to men in the book, and the book is, um, my book is for men. Of course, I, women are, I'm happy for women to read it, and it, I think it's helpful to women. But it's to tell men that, you know, speak up and don't let women control the dialogue. Don't let, let women control what's going on in the media and only have input into what they need and what they want. I think men also need to speak up and make their voice heard. Dr. Smith, it's great to talk with you today. The book is called Men on Strike, and of course, it's for sale on Amazon in Canada and in the States. Dr. Smith, great to have you on the show. Thanks very much. And Thanks best so regards much, to your Dr. husband, Dr. Smith, uh, a.k.a. Insta Pundit. Of course, his name is Glenn Reynolds. I'm a fan of his and yours. Thanks for being on the show today. Thank you.